Hi, and welcome to our second live tasting from Windswept Brewing Company. I'm Nigel. Without much further ado, we are looking today at Weizen. Um, Weizen is a wheat beer, Weizen meaning wheat, clearly. The beer was first brewed in 2013 for Moktoberfest. Those of you who know, um, Oktoberfest was our, um, well, it's not ours actually, it's a, it's a group that we put together of local brewers uh, and we, um, uh, it's a charity event which has been held um, for quite a few years now since 2013. Unfortunately, um, we didn't manage it last year, it's not going to happen again this year, but Oktoberfest was the first time that we uh, brewed Weizen, um, being a classic German style, we thought it was only appropriate to make sure that there was, uh, there was Weizen. Uh, at, at the event. Weizen basically is, um, has proved over the years to be a, a really popular product, particularly at events. Um, people doing uh, beer festivals in the summer, it always goes down well, we sell a lot of it. Um, and uh, among its, it's won many awards as well, both Scotland um, and it's had some national recognition, but most notably this year, well, I say this year actually, 2019, uh, it's uh, the Camera Champion Beer of Scotland um, in cask, which uh, uh, is a huge accolade actually. And um, uh, and yeah, it's, it's a, we think it's a great beer. As I say, it's a classic German wheat beer. Um, um, we use a Weinstefana yeast, Weinstefana, um, thousand years old nearly brewery, supposed to be the oldest brewery in the world. Um, it was started by some Benedictine monks and, and now it's, oh, I'm going to check that I'll get this right, it's the uh, the Royal Bavarian States Brewery, um, who make um, Weinstefana, um, but it's their yeast that we um, use in this beer, and, and, and that's largely what gives it um, this, the, the really specific flavour profiles that it has, more of which um, we will talk about in, in a little while. Um, so clearly we're all thirsty, including me, so I'm going to get on and open this. 5.2%. Uh, Cloudy wheat beer. Um, cloudy really depends on how you pour it. So we're going to have a look at that. And I'm going to talk a bit about carbonation as well. A little bit of fizz. And there's a little bit of carbonation there. This. This is actually slightly low, we think, on carbonation. Um, uh, we've got a couple of questions about it, so I'm sure they're going to come up. Um, but So, yeah, we would probably want a little bit more, but there is some fizz there. It's more of a cask um, level of carbonation. Um, but that said, uh, a lot of what you get is going to depend, and carbonation is going to depend on how, how uh, warm it is when you pour it. Uh, what I've done, actually, is I've got a... Uh, so you can see, if you look at my glass there, there is a bit of fizz coming out. I don't know whether you can see that. There's a little bit of carbonation coming through there. Um, and if I just get another bottle. Now, this one I stuck in the fridge about an hour and a half, two hours ago, um, which is, I'm just getting my back left and right, right. Um, so cold, very cold, actually. Um, and the colder the beer, the, um, the more it's, the gases stay in solution, so much less of a fizz. And I'll try and do a similar sort of pour. Um, but I'm struggling to get anything there, and that's because it's very cold. And basically, the gas will just stay stay in um, solution uh, if you have it in the fridge for a long period of time. Um, so if you do want to chill your beer, then um, any bottle conditioned beers really, you should pop it in the fridge for 30 minutes tops beforehand. If you're keeping it in a fridge, you'll kill any a lot of the carbonation. Unless, of course, you happen to have a beer that's really well carbonated and, and, and is over, over, over carbonated, in which case you can calm it down by putting it in the fridge. Um, and uh, that, will, uh, that will help reduce the amount of, of, of froth you get. So I'm going to go back to my uh, slightly better temperature beer here. Um, so... As you can see, it's poured nice and clear, uh, and what I'm going to do is, so that is Cristal, so uh, um, two ways you can pour this, Cristal, which is very carefully, and then Mit Heifer, and I'm going to 
I like it mit heather, so I'm going to put some of the yeast in there. You see how the yeast drops in, so heifer being yeast, uh, drop the yeast in, and um, you get this lovely cloudy uh, wheat beer, which is really how, well, I think it should be uh, should be served. Straight away, as soon as I smell that, I'm getting this huge sort of fruity banana hit. Most people say banana, get banana on it. Um, bubble gum, banana bubble gum sort of aroma, quite sweet and really quite quite marked um, banana y uh, aroma there. Um, that all comes from the yeast. Um, we don't add any bananas. You cannot count this as one of your five a day, although you might like to. Um, and uh, um, it's 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 really a, a tantamount to, to, to the, the Bay Stefano yeast and it giving this great sort of banana and bubblegum flavor. And and if you if you drink Bay Stefano um, beside this, you'll see the similarities. But as gives it a whole lot more banana, and not quite so much of the clove that you get um, um, with the Vange Stefano beer, um, if you're comparing the two. So uh, I'm going to have a drink because I'm getting thirsty. So cheers to everybody and uh, happy isolating. So yeah, so just to go back to the carbonation, you would, I think we can agree, a couple of people have commented on, on carbonation, and yeah, I, I would agree. I'd, I'd uh, tend to say that you want to have this a little bit more carbonated. Um, it is a little bit low on the carbonation, but at release, we did check, we have checked, and at release this batch was okay, um, but it just doesn't seem to be coming out subsequently. Some of that will be, will be temperature. Mine's got a little bit of fizz to it. But if you're serving it very cold, you will um, find that there's there's very little carb. There's probably very little carbonation on it. Um, but that great banana flavour is coming through, and that that flavour, what you're getting there, the banana sort of bubblegum uh, pear drop uh, flavour and aroma, that is a, a chemical um, which you probably made when you were doing your chemistry um, back at school. Um, it's, it's a thing called iso amyl acetate and it produces this amazing banana sort of flavor all yeasts will produce um, this um, chemical it's just that the particular yeast we use in the uh, Weizen uh, produces it in such a quantity that it trips over um, your the, your taste your flavor threshold so everything everything has a has a flavor threshold to it so depending on how many parts per million there are um, of a certain chemical, uh, you'll, you'll either taste it or you won't. And, it, and people are more slightly more sensitive uh, than others, but generally speaking, there's a pretty clear cutoff um, with uh, flavors and certainly with this. Um, it's produced by most yeasts, but not in the same quantities that we get here. And that's why you get that it's amazing that they're real big banana. Um, you will, when, you, when, when you taste it, depending on whether you've got it crystal, where it'll be a bit cleaner, probably, and crisper. Um, I've got it in it heifer, um, but either way, you get a lovely um, uh, sort of mouth feel. Uh, it's got, it's got, it sort of coats your mouth a little bit, um, the beer. Part of that will be, um, there's two things that come into to that, really, for, for this. Um, lots of wheat um, give, give better body, but also we add carapils, um, which will give us uh, more dextrins, than, uh, than you, you get with normal malt, and those dextrins um, will give you a better mouthfeel. Uh, and we also um, get some sweetness from uh, the beer. So by mashing, so we mash at a slightly higher temperature uh, with the, the bison. And but when we mash, so that's where we add the, add the hot water and let it sit for, for us, it's an hour and a half. Um, if, if you mash at a slightly higher temperature, then they, there are two enzymes that are breaking down the starch. There's uh, alpha amylase and there's beta amylase. And alpha amylase works better at higher temperatures. It's more active at that sort of 67, 68 degrees. And so and what alpha amylase does is it chops up the uh, starch, um, the carbohydrate chain into, into, into big chunks. It cuts it in the middle. Um, beta amylase chops the ends off and produces more simple sugars. Um, so by mashing slightly hotter, we're producing more complex sugars. Uh, these are less fermentable, and so they end up not getting fermented out, and so you get them in the flavor. So I'm tasting them, tasting quite a sweet beer. There's that banana 
flavor. There's a lovely bit of sweetness there. There's the nice mouthfeel um, uh, from the wheat and the carapils giving us that, that sort of coating and, and very, very low bitterness. Um, so bitterness, um, I might have mentioned this before, is in, uh, measured in uh, IBUs, International Bitterness Units. Not very uh, inventive, whoever made that one up. Um, and the, in, in, the bitterness on this is about is, is in the early 20s, 21, 22. We will, um, if you have a traditional British bitter, that's going to be in the 30s, 30 to 35. Um, something like our APA is up in the 50s. Our blonde is about 40. So this is very low on the bitterness. So you get a lot of the sweetness coming through um, and uh, you get a lot of the... Um, and so you, and you get the, those dextrins coming through to give you mouthfeel um, and, and not, not such a crisp finish as you might get um, if you had a, a more bitter bitter tang at the back of your back of your throat there. So lots of sweetness, low bitterness. We use Admiral and um, Cascade. So Admiral's a bittering hot, but we don't use very much in this particular brew. Uh, Cascade is um, gives it. It's a, we do it at a very low level and it just gives a little bit of fruit and um, it gives a little bit of little bit of brightness to it. Um, the uh, With food, um, yeah, I mean, it goes pretty well with, with, with all sorts. Cheese is good. Yeah, cheese, goat's cheese particularly. Cheese with a bit of tang to it um, goes really well with this. Uh, and it, it, it's quite nice with, with sort of with, with tapas because it's a nice, easy drinking beer, particularly... Um, uh, in the summer, then it's quite nice with sort of with sort of nibbles and tapas and that sort of thing. The um, it's also because it's got a bit of sweetness to it, it. It's it's quite good with something sweet. So chocolate, that chocolate banana thing goes quite well um, with uh, things like chocolate cake. Um, and but it's one of those beers that's quite nice with with any food. We're having a barbecue tonight. It'll go really well with a barbecue. Um, that's pretty much all I've got to say on actually the beer. And brewing it, it's 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 a it's really actually quite a simple beer to brew, um, which is maybe why the Germans do it so much. Um, so a couple of other things then on uh, on on the beer and, and brewing, and um, we've been asked a few times on 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 uh, what the well the process is really with, with brewing the product and how how long really how long it takes. What what do we do? Well, so. It's a day for the brew, um, and then depending on how the fermentation goes, and, and the Weizen yeast is quite quite lively, so it ferments pretty pretty rapidly. Um, then it, it'll take about four days to uh, four days for it to ferment out. Should be there thereabouts. We then um, basically let it let the temperature drop. Um, and let it sit for a few days at a lower temperature. We get a bit of carbonation. Um, and with this beer, we basically take it straight from the fermenter into a bottling tank um, with very little filtration, um, just to get the worst, really, of the, uh, of, of the excess yeast out. Um, and then we bottle. So we can have this basically go into bottling within about two weeks of the brew. And then once it's been bottled, it's going to be uh, it's going to be two weeks before it's ready because when we bottle, we add a bit of a little bit of priming sugar and a little bit of a, a yeast to give it carbonation, uh, and then we put it into a warm room um, to trigger the fermentation process again. So we get a secondary fermentation in the bottle, and that is going to take around about two weeks to get us to the point where the beer is ready um, to go out the door. Uh, that sort of that sort of wraps this one up a little bit. Uh, I, I would also I'd like everyone to raise raise a glass again. I don't know whether you you are out on your in your street or whatever clapping the, uh, the essential workers, the NHS, everyone who's working hard to try and keep us safe uh, and fit and healthy. But um, I think uh, appropriate for us to raise raise a glass uh, to all those essential workers again uh, tonight. So uh, cheers to you. Thanks for all your all your work and your commitment. So looking forward to seeing you all next week uh, and we will uh, keep safe, uh, keep healthy and um, enjoy your beers. Cheers.